uh, a very good evening morning and afternoon to all of you who have joined us today we promise to conduct more such workshops you'll soon see a couple of interesting workshops lined up for fridays as well now today's workshop is around the topic future of design 2030 which we all are curious to know and understand where actually is design heading with the changing environments our lifestyles and especially after covid hit us so badly uh, even our working styles have changed so and plus there is web3 now so how are we going to adapt let's learn some bits about it today we have pratikesh with us pratikesh is a ux consultant who has worked and is working with big clients like deloitte across the world He has led and consulted a talented design team at a startup with his immen immense passion for user-centric design and quest for quenching his thirst. Thirst, he finds great interest in the field of design and technology. Pratikesh, the stage is all yours. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining the call, and uh, I hope I'm not disturbing your Friday uh, plans uh, because that could be a big, I mean, big time to uh, schedule a plan with friends and going out to enjoy the weekend. but i'll try to keep it crisp to the point and a fun activity so i won't take your time much uh let me share my screen so uh i know a lot of people are curious about future of design and and they they keep thinking what could be the future because uh when we see uh the time has changed from the covid and which provoke everyone what could be the future because uh the entire pandemic was unexpected right and uh, it was not predicted and a lot of things happened within the last two years and which make us think about what would be the future of coming technologies design and even what could be the next lifestyle right so i've seen uh, in, in in this platform uh, pro app i've seen that there are a lot of good workshop which are focusing on different aspect of design like how to build your career how to make your portfolio and even how to make your resume and which really helpful and uh, considering that i was thinking what could be the best or uh, maybe a different topic to uh, share with you guys right and i thought of like why not to focus on uh, the design aspect and how exactly it will be in future through my point of view so so i was for that i was just uh, interacting with a lot of mentees across the world and uh, trying to understand what exactly they are looking for and what are their perception in terms of understanding the ux design uh, will be in future because there are a lot of uncertainties in uh, specific to the newbies joinees who have recently come to the design they have a lot of questions about what will be the future jobs and is there a job security and stuff like that uh, definitely i'll answer to all your questions uh, in the end of the presentation but before that uh, i'll just uh, yeah so this is about me uh, apart from design i love to write articles i also a good swimmer and also love to paint things and uh, as as uh, rishika already told about my introduction that i have consulted big clients across the world and uh, also leading uh, startups uh, helping them to get into the business and uh, gain lot of uh, roi from the designs and also i am mentoring on adp list and design.org so in case if you want to get one to one session with me you can use this kind of platform of course uh, pro app is also one of the platform for that yeah so what will you learn from the workshop right so when it's come to future of design i was thinking a uh, different aspect like how should i frame the entire understanding of design evolution into a small simple concepts right so Uh, when i was thinking about it i was uh, came across the design context which is one of the very important terms uh, which will help us to understand how exactly design is evolving from the billions of years and how exactly design is now today and how it will be in future right so uh, the workshop will be into three phases of course it will start with the evolution of design context second will be the next paradigm shift and third would be the future design approach uh if you have any question in between you can put it in chat box i would uh, if it is possible i try to answer it otherwise i'll answer it after the presentation so what is design context right so design that facilitates in the ecosystem of time space dynamic environment and human need and we have seen that design have evolving tremendously 
from uh, from billions of years right so when it's come to design context if i would uh, give you an example if you design something working from home would be different if you design something working from office because the entire ecosystem will create a different kind of impact on your thinking process it will associate with uh, the requirement of that uh, ecosystem what will be the environment what space demands you to think like that and what would be the dynamic based on that you create your own ideation and thinking process but to understand that how exactly it has been evolving let's go back to 10000 bf so uh, uh, how exactly it's going to help you definitely it is uh, will help you to uh, create a pattern and trend of human needs and change in ecosystem so if we understand the pattern of evolution it will help us to understand how it will be in future right so to understand uh, the entire evolution i created a small illustration just uh, just a bird eye view to understand how exactly it will look so this is a evolution time stamp i created of design so each time stamp is triggered by some kind of uh, change in environment that trigger human to design something and come up with some creativity right which started 2.6 million years ago where human designed the first tool maybe we'll we'll see in detail what could be the trigger point to come up with this kind of tools and similarly if you go to 10000 bc architecture was one of the uh, biggest evolution uh, where human uh, were involved into the architecture and design and uh, renaissance and art right after that of course in 1850 industrialization was the triggering shift and uh, in 1960 marketing and pop art and of course in 1989 that we are all part of it this is a information technology and what exactly we are doing today and at the end of this presentation we will understand maybe try to understand what could be there in future so moving ahead uh, when i say about design 2.6 million years ago uh, it was i mean you 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 can understand what would be the ecosystem at that point of time right so uh, tools were created considering the survival needs for humans and this must be the bringing of developing design cognition where nobody was aware about what would be the creation of or what would be the creation process by human cognition so considering the survival and hunt in mind they started creating the tools for their own protection and survival was the triggering shift from that point of time it started uh, evolution of design so they created a tool for protecting themselves they again started uh, inhabited themselves into the caves and also invention of wheel design in 10000 bc uh, so it was the first uh, uh, so at that point of time many public works especially religious buildings were designed with aesthetics in mind and as well as functionality so Uh, architecture was the epitome of uh, conglomeration of different peoples for the religious prayers or the religious things or uh, uh, social gathering or social events hence they started designing the entire architecture in using the art and design with which helped them to encourage people think about art and uh, it also helped them to believe on a uh, religious aspect of the world uh, they were also built to inspire as well as serve public functions the exterior and interior acted as a showcase for the fine art paintings uh, at that point of time art and renaissance was the triggering shift uh, i keep uh, emphasize on shift or triggering shift because it will help us to understand what could be the next triggering shift similarly of course in 1850 when the manufacturing process a new technology of of the or new facilitation of the manufacturing process comes into the role where people were thinking out of the box like how would be the new future products would look like how the people will interact with the product and what would be the user experience and i think that would be the genesis of user experience similarly in 1960 it, it is one of my favorite uh, trend what i was keep following from my uh, design school uh, which is pop art which make me think about how exactly uh, uh, an art comes into the design domain right so uh, evolution of marketing and communication design bring a new form of design trend called pop art right so at that point of time 
the idea behind pop art was to break the tradition theme of morality religion history they used mass product uh, uh, they used mass produced commercial items and tasteless advertisement material as a art object celebrating them as a fine art so pop art come up with uh, creating protest against the contemporary practices of designs and they want to do something out of the box make it more pop out in the domain of marketing and which will help a lot of business that is how the, the invention of communication design started so now today we call it as a graphic design and of course like how design is today i mean we have seen the evolution and i mean we have seen like how we as a designer also evolve in terms of thinking about design i mean you might think like uh, i mean 10000 years back like how uh, the process was different and now it has completely changed to the new aspect of the process of design so it will start with uh, today we live in the internet ecosystem surrounded with complex use cases and digital problems i have seen a uh, ux designer who work rigorously on to the uh, in the different process of design and they come up with the best possible solution with high fidelity prototype which ultimately used to reduce the time uh, user time on the screen so that is the ultimate goal for that but what would be the future of design right so so it is evident that design context has been evolving from millions of years but how will it help to understand the next pattern shift to know that uh, maybe for fortune telling is a myth but forecasting is not so at least we can forecast to develop or iterate our own approach for the future process we can build a design approach today that facilitates the future. So moving ahead, saving user time is ultimate goal in today's generation of design. Everybody is going through a different process uh, just to find out what would be the best navigation practice to come up with, uh, or what would be the next approach for the user that user can quickly achieve their goal within shorter period of time. And I think I believe that that must be the goal of every wage designer like how you can achieve the goal, how the user can achieve the goal in short period of time. So we all design and work hard and try to come up with the best possible solution for that. And this is also connected to business ROI for all the tech companies across the world. And that is how the terms like user retention and uh, user feedback comes into the role where we always keep trying to retain the user to the product, right? And that is the ultimate goal of all designers. But Moving forward, uh, when, when it's come to saving time, let's see how exactly we go. So we started with the mobile uh, built by Nokia. I, I, mean, I mean, everybody might be uh, know about this product. So it was one of the fantastic product designed by uh, industrial designers. And if you see the screen size of this mobile, which was started I think 10, 15 years back, and what exactly we have today and coming back to this. So if you see the screen size is almost same. So ultimately we are again going back to the same trend where we are reducing the screen size, of course, which ultimately help to reduce the user time, right? But how exactly this projectile will go in future, right? So I think that zero UI would be the next milestone for us where there won't be no interface at all and users will directly interact with the uh, with the communication or with the mode of uh, uh, vocal interaction right and you might have seen this kind of devices into your uh, different uh, uh, different locations like it could be a home or it could be any place where you interact with the module and it will respond you back with the ai right so I always used to see, uh, I mean, it's one of my favorite movie. I think a lot of people might have gone through it, like uh, Back to the Future trilogy. So which tell you like how exactly you can uh, time travel from different decades and different times, uh, timestamps. And I think uh, that inspired me to go uh, think about how exactly the design will be in future. So today we are at uh, the exponential curve and technology is changing like Iron Man and Suit. I mean, I believe a lot of people are fan of Marvel and you, they might have seen like how 
the iron man suit is keep changing and evolving with respect to upcoming technology and that is how we are exactly uh, looking at the technology and it's exponentially ch uh, exponentially changing with respect to time right so every decade will experience new technology and specific to when it's come to pandemic right so world has changed significantly and that has triggered our lifestyle as well so it could be a provoking provoking time for us to think about what could be the upcoming technology and when i was thinking about it i came across a different aspect of new technologies that uh, i would love to share with you guys so these are the projected new technology trade what i think could be and of course there will be a uh, different one as well uh, which start with nanobots in brain so maybe the future would be uh, injecting the nanoparticles in brain and connecting our brain thinking process to the cloud or maybe people reincarnation through ai which is i think i have seen lot of prototypes where people already started using about reincarnating people using the ai by reloading their entire memory behavior and what not ai will be uh, will become a positive new job motivator and of course iot in houses would be another uh, pattern shift space tourism would be uh, the next technology that we designer definitely should consider in terms of uh, creating user experience driverless commute uh, which is already started and executing into the market uh, plant based charging uh, its upcoming technology which is uh, new and uh, of course there will be a new energy sources and drone traffic so i have seen lot of uh, execution of drone uh, used by a lot of different startups are coming into the market and i might predict that in future there will be a drone traffic rule since we designers also have to think about how exactly the ecosystem will work when it's come to a lot of drones coming into the world so in the realm of this new technologies designer will be the new hero that's what i believe and if we uh, have to become a hero we uh, to become a batman we need to build a new approach to new uh, in house design terms and methodologies to think like if we want to adapt ourselves into the new technologies we have to come up with new out of the box ideation new out of the box methodologies and terms how to do that let's see uh, ahead so to understand uh, the entire uh, upcoming uh, challenges uh specific to the ai i just conducted a small experiment with my friend i ask her that uh, she she can tell me the weirdest dream she have seen ever uh, in her life and i uh, started illustrating her uh, imagination of weirdest dream uh, and try to understand how exactly i perceive her imagination and i was trying to match the illustration what i created with her imagination and the same thing i asked ai to do and i was comparing like what exactly would be the difference so let's see what exactly she said so so uh, the description was a uh, dentist reception and clinic in the theme of human mouth with tongue as a carpet in the room molar teeth as a chair and the esophagus as the entire entry to the dentist room so when i heard it first time it was very difficult for me to digest what exactly this kind of imagination is but then i started understanding and co associating my own experience about mouth and dentist room and uh, what how exactly the reception is counter will look like what would be the teeth will look like and what not and i gave the same query to the ai and see how exactly ai will generate this and this was the result so at the left if you see this is illustrated by ai and this is illustrated by me so when i ask her what would be and which is the best resemblance resemblance to her dream uh, here was writing so this was uh, which is generated by ai was uh, scored 2 out of 10 and what is illustrated by me scored 9 out of 10 so the point here was i was trying to tell you even though uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning have evolved tremendously uh, in last decade but still are there things or are there is a uh, are there a scope of improvements from the design perspective as well that we need to think about it 
because AI has huge amount of data. It has a similar mechanism of thinking. It has a neural network. It has a deep machine learning. The way we are perceiving things today, or the way we are learn about the world today. But when it's come to perception and understanding the story, it's completely different. AI, even though AI has memory, but it don't have to process memory. It don't have skill to process it. And that is what I feel that next designer paradigm shift will be. We have to get into the machine learning. We have to get into the AI and think about what we can build about it and how exactly we can make AI more humanized. How to do that? Let's see it. This also provoked me to ask a lot of questions to myself, how AI will change our life. What will be the future of ROI? How user will be happy with the product in future? And how new technologies will change our ethics? And will there be a new design process? And there are a lot of questions which are coming to mind. And of course, I believe that same questions you might ask yourself as well. To build new design approach, there are some methodologies that we need to start initiating. Uh, one of the methods is context mapping. So as I told you about how the uh, evolution of design context has changed across the years. And hence to understand that we, all, we can also predict what would be the next context of design will be. To do that, uh, we can follow this kind of practices where we can have a canvas and we can iterate all the ideations into that. So let's example, if we are trying to come up with a new design solution based on the new technology. So we can use context mapping or context canvas to understand how exactly the design solution will fit into the future ecosystem which will follow the dem demographic trend, which will also tell us about rules and regulation about, uh, from the government, economy and environment of the country, uh, of course, the marketing competition or marketing analysis, technological trend, customer needs, and uncertainties. This kind of methodologies we need to adopt today to understand what exactly the upcoming future will be. Similarly, hype cycle. This could be another approach to understand the projectile of upcoming technologies. So it will help us to synthesize the trajectory of the future trend. So uh, if you see this graph, it shows how exactly the uh, technology has evolved with respect to expectations and time. And if you see, this has changed tremendously over the last few years. And that is what that is why I told you we are the exponential of. We might see a new technology within upcoming few years. Hence, we have to be ready about it. So, to moving ahead, uh, they, these are a couple of approach. What I think that could be uh, good for you to understand about uh, how you start initiating about it. So, you might need to start working on cross-functional project. Uh, work with medical staff, geologists, try to understand their perspective, how they think about the ecosystem. Secondly, validate new technologies. I have seen a lot of designers are uh, uh, stuck in between uh, a job survival process and they are going through uh, the uh, portfolio and resume, which is also equally important. But out of the box, you also need to get your hands on on new technologies. Look around what kind of different platforms are there and go validate those technologies, cross check with the different use cases and think about how exactly it will work with future human use cases. Of course, the fourth point is understanding business rituals. So when it's come to design, of course, business is another key part of it, where uh, not only about design, but what would be the new uh, future design rituals will be, how the business will work when it's come to AI, everything will be driven by machine learning or artificial intelligence, how the business will earn from it and how designers will play uh, their role to get the best ROI for the companies. I mean, it will help us to study new business natures and understand ROI mechanism for the future as well. The last and not the least, but encounter new use cases. So being into the UX UI industry, we are stuck with the same use cases again and again. So I think it's high time to go out of the box and think about the new use cases, like what would be, uh, how exactly would be the new drone system management or what would be the new future technology that will adopt to the specific country location and whatnot. So work with unapproachable people like historians, scientists, 
which will definitely give you the new use cases to think about. So I also uh, mentioned this all point in one of my article, which just link has uh, is provided here, or maybe I can also share in the chat box, where I described it the detail about what would be the approach for upcoming design and how exactly we start working today or building our approach today to get ourselves fit into the upcoming requirements. So it's high time to launch about our job survival skill set. So to understand new design spectrum, I think that this could be the new domain where we will be uh, looking ourselves uh, within maybe not more than five years or 10 years. There will be a de ethical design for AI would be the domain. Biosphere design, which is a new demand for the changing, uh, I mean, it's uh, 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 the demanding of global warming. Design in politics. I have seen that politics play a huge role in terms of uh, driving the ecosystem and the driving the country. So I, I would imagine that designers will play a key role in uh, into the politics, like how you can incorporate your design thinking into the politics. As I also told you about space or tourism. So think about what would be the user experience in space, because if people will thinking about going to the space for attending and maybe spending one week in orbit, what would be the user experience? Because uh, the entire ecosystem will be different. Uh, there won't be a gravity. There might be the uh, fundamental things behave differently into the space. So we also need to think about it. So that's what I believe that future, uh, this is how we will be look ourselves to work in this kind of domain. And of course there will be more, not, not. I've seen there are a lot of questions are coming. I'll answer to that one by one. So yeah, uh, this is about my presentation and maybe, uh, I know you guys have a lot of questions and a lot of things. So I try to keep this presentation that I will just give you a thought provoking presentation where you started thinking about uh, what would be the upcoming train, what would be the next uh, uh, responsibilities will designer will have in future. Yeah. So I'll hand it to Rashika. Uh, maybe we can go ahead for the question answer session. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think it was a really great presentation and something to think of. Uh, I was just speaking to people, like I just posted a question that has someone used mid journey. Uh, did you try mid journey? So the, yes, the, illust the illustration you just showcased, it reminded me of mid journey and I would just give the weirdest of the scenarios to it and <laughs> the results would be something which is even better than my imagination. Right. I think, uh, Close. And, yeah. And I showed it to my one of my designers, and he, I say, okay, man, you're gonna lose your job <laughs> if this is something which is gonna keep happening. <laughs> That's true, actually. So uh, I mean, uh, cool. that was really interesting trend for me when I was trying my hand. Uh, uh, initially, I started with the basic imagination, and then I came up with why not to experiment something out of it, and how see AI things about our real life example. So. Uh, that's how I come up with this kind of experiment, you would say. Cool. I think, guys, it's time to put down some questions and ask some questions to from Patikesh. We have him for more half an hour. So. I think everyone is in a Friday mode. They're not even speaking today. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can understand that. Okay. First question would be, how should I start my journey with UI or UX? Okay. I think uh, Hitesh. Hi, Hitesh. Uh, I think it's a fundamental question. And uh, so... Uh, UI UX uh, is, is uh, I mean first you need to start understanding about uh, design context how you can think about I mean first I, I would rather I would say you should start asking question to yourself first like who are you and what exactly you're looking into the UI UX design right and uh, first you start thinking about uh, I mean I have uh, telling 
giving this kind of exercise to all my mentees that if you really want to get into the UX design, start thinking about design critics, right? So if you love any kind of application in your mobile, take that app application as an example and write down your design critic, what you think as a designer about the application. Think about each and every flow, jot down your points, what you think that could be a good user experience and what do you think that could have been better into the application, which will help you to build your own aspect as a designer. And uh, it will also build your foundation to build uh, how to think critically about an application. So I think that could be the right way uh, to start with it. Yeah, I hope I answered your question. I think there is another question from Harshad. If we are going to zero UI, then what is the role of UX? I think that is a great yeah. question, uh, uh, Harshad. Uh, I think that's I. That's what I said. Like when it's come to uh, zero user, zero user interface, right? Uh, we need to think about what would be the next form of interaction, right? And that will be in the form of vocal interaction, or it could be maybe uh, in the form of imagination, right? So when it's come to vocal in interaction, right? You might have seen an example of chat box, right? See how chat box interact with you. Do you find it more humanized or do you find it more robotic? Ask this kind of question to yourself and think about how the backend mechanism is working by answering to your questions, right? So uh, the UI UX designer role would be to create experience. So uh, a lot of people are, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of candidates when I see and talk with them, they are a bit confused about uh, uh, what would be the user experience uh, today and what could be in future, I would say the role will be the same. It will be exactly same, same process and same approach. Just, just you have to think out of the box about it. So assume that if you are interacting with someone on the device, right? Think about what would be the interaction would look like if, if you uh, interact with your friend or your colleague, like right? same experience you have to uh, create into the tool as well. So I think that would be the role where you have to think critically about communication design or maybe uh, interacting through the vocal uh, uh, platform. So, yeah, I think that would be. I think the, as and when the role of UX also keeps evolving, like we just started with the designing the experience for the products and the services. Now it has moved to conversational UX when it comes right. to chatbot. Yeah, so yeah. that's where I think uh, designers are the real heroes of the future, no matter whatever yeah. there is, because yeah. you can cannot create an experience. Right? As in, you can you cannot automate an experience. That's something which I believe. You right. can automate a code, you can write a script, but you cannot automate an experience which a user needs at that particular time. That's true. And you know what, uh, adding to your point, uh, even Harshad answering to your question, uh, you also think about uh, how knowledge base work in the back end when it's come to chat box, right? Uh, I mean, in knowledge base, you have the entire uh, network of your communication. Think about as a designer, how you can design the entire knowledge network uh, in such a way that it should sound more conversational as uh, Rishika told. So yeah, I think that would be uh, the approach to start with. Cool. We have two questions in the Q&A section itself. It's like, are there any resources where we can learn more about the future of design? And secondly, what role with, will AR and VR or metaverse technology play in the future of design? Sure. Okay, I'll, I'll go with, uh, so what was the first question? Are there any resources where we can learn more about the future of design? Yes, of course, uh, there are a lot of, uh, I think you can start with the basic understanding from a platform like mediums uh, where there are a lot of articles uh, written on AR, VR. And uh, I think that is the best way to start with understanding and digesting the information, how AI work. On the top of that, I would encourage you to look around uh, a platform like uh, uh, AI and uh, maybe related, uh, uh, maybe, uh, related to machine learning and coding related platforms. You can use uh, those platform to understand how exactly this technology works. 
i'll just share some of the links and uh, resources in the chat box so that you can go to it yeah what was the second question uh, what role with ai will ai and vr or metaverse technology play in the future of design mm -hmm. i think uh, it already started a lot of designers across the world started working on it understanding the new use cases so when it's come to ar and vr uh, it's uh, it's um, it's about designing the entire uh, ecosystem or i would say environment and how exactly human will interact with the environment i think that is a key role so i think it is also challenging for visual designers to think imagine imagining new stuff out of it and now it's time to uh, Take a, I mean, it's time to paint something into the 3D environment and create a, a more hyper-realistic atmosphere into the VR domain. And adding to that, I think haptics would be another uh, approach where you can how exactly you will interact with the virtual world. And haptics, haptics right. plays a key role in terms of that. Right? You just need to think what could be the new tools and how you physically interact with. Uh, uh this kind of uh, virtual environment and what could be the feedback from the environment and uh, you have to critically think about different use cases how exactly we walk inside it and uh, i mean you know what we already started working on it uh, um, i have a couple of project on it maybe i would love to share uh, with you guys uh, and uh, give you more aspect of how exactly it's working now Do you think AI will start generating UI and improve UX? If so, how? As it has already started making arts and illustration. Right. I think this is a good question. But uh, again, I said when it's come to uh, AI and human imagination, right? Both have the same mechanism. As I showed, uh, as I told that right? AI do have a machine learning and deep neural networking, right? Uh, it, it does have a kind of memories. It does have a huge amount of data which uh, AI can process. But still, uh, when it's come to processing the memory, AI still processes into the linear approach. But we as a human perceive things differently. Even though we have a same memory, even though we have the same uh, 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 data in our mind, but we process it differently. I think that processing data is still different, what I would say. and. I don't think that it will change with respect to, uh, with respect to time because uh, at the end, when you uh, thinking about machine learning, it is a mechanism of processing the data. But when it's come to human, it's also connect with emotions. It also connect with a uh, lot of different aspect and different spectrum of uh, thinking, right? So I think that is what my experiment is was about. Uh, how exactly human think about the abstract part of it, or how uh, machine learning think about it. So maybe uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence will play a good job in terms of uh, imagining something abstract or imagining something in the, form, in the form of art. But when it's come to design, I'm still skeptical about it because when it's come to design, you also think about uh, users' perception, uh, their latent needs and whatnot. So I think we don't need to worry about AI. Cool. Okay. Can you talk more about ethical design for AI? How will design help in creating ethical AI models? Right. So I think this is a really good question, and I think that uh, will answer to my. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, that would definitely uh, connect to the lot of different questions. So when it's come to ethical AI, so if you see the behavior of AI, right, it's dominantly. Uh, it, it's dominate, dominating our lifestyle, right? The kind of decision we take, it also influences that as well, right? Uh, even when it's come to social media, the way machine learning is working day by day, the kind of advertisement or the kind of recommendation we are receiving all based on the machine learning, right? But on the top of that, when it's come to the future, right? Uh, think about if AI will work 360 or around the world, right? There will be a lot of decisions will be which will be driven from the base of uh, AI or machine learning. And having said that, you also need to think about uh, 
on the top of machine learning mechanism we as a designer also think about how we can make it more humanized so when i say more humanized we need to think about more ethical ai which think as a human which uh, which build ethics as a human which do not think as a just a data but you can derive your own ethics what is the good thing what is the wrong thing about humans and that also need to build into the process and i think as a designer that's what we are doing today itself when it's come to designing a user interface we also think about uh, what would be uh, what would uh, we the screen would look like what would be the cta button what would be uh, the drop down would look like right that is what 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 we are doing today is a form of interaction but the same context will be uh, there in future when when it's come to interacting with ai we also need to think about how the ai should behave in particular situation and that is how we have to work as a ux designer or user experience designer where we will be thinking how ai will behave as a human not as a machine learning or not as a robot so that's what i uh, thinking about ethical ai will play a key role into that so you need to design different ethics for that you have to learn a lot of uh, different ecosystem use cases how people are behaving in this particular country how people are behaving in another country and uh, what are their cultural background how they behave how they perceive things what they eat what they uh, what kind of movie they watch based on that we also uh, think about uh, how exactly we can derive new ethical design and that will be installed into the machine learning and ai uh, that is how it will that is how it will sound uh, as a human Okay, we have two questions, similar questions. Any good books for like you would suggest for UI to start with UI and UX design? I think when it's come to books, I think uh, design of everyday things would be the best uh, book. Yes. That what I started right. my career with, uh, which is written by Don Norman. And uh, uh, this book is not about how you design or create prototype, but it will definitely help you to how to think as a designer, right? And uh, trust me this book will surprise you with a lot of things uh so i have a question pratikesh like mm -hmm. I, i was just thinking about it so how will the accessibility part of design do you think will be taken care in the future like we talked about ai like for now we have you know our web content accessibility guidelines but mm -hmm. or uh, like how about in future if everything is being you know taken over by ai or not taken over but um uh, say 40 to 50 percent or even 60 percent right we are going we are trying to automate things but how does the guidelines and the accessibility would play the part i think this is a really uh, great question ratika so uh, i mean we we need to understand how accessibility work today so today when it's come to accessibility guideline it's more based on uh, your color your screen size your font how exactly you uh, uh, maintain the layout of your content stuff like right. that so this is more based on the interface right but when it's come to future it will be more in terms of communication or uh, how you uh, interact with the devices i think that would be the major role uh, uh, that we need to think right. about so even if could be communicating with a device how a disabled person or specially able person will uh, will do that uh, when it's come to uh, a different kind so even it's come to different kind of disability how we uh, consolidate all their requirements into the one device which will which won't have any kind of interaction or which won't have won't have any kind of user interface but still you can connect with it so i think uh, answering to that question would be really difficult but of course it will encourage me to think about it a lot more because because i have seen that uh, we are also started connecting our brain and memory to the cloud so right i think on the top of that i would still ask a question will there be a requirement of accessibility guidelines in future if we don't That's have any yeah. right right okay so what new thing do you wish technology could do to curate design in the future awesome i think a uh, lot of uh, tools already started working on it i would say they automating different kind of uh, even even in the in, when it's come to logo design process so it was different earlier when i was in uh, my design school i was learning about 
following the entire huge process of designing a logo and you had to come up with philosophy design shapes and whatnot but now i have seen that there are a lot of uh, tools available online which uh, automate or maybe create or illustrate your uh, logo within 5 minutes so that is how it's changing uh, i think uh, we 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 need to think about how we want to build upcoming future as a designer right uh, yeah. because again i say when when it's come to designing it is more personalized right it is you have your own memory uh, which associate with their design solution you have users memory stakeholders memories uh, which associate your design output from the project which i still skeptical about will ai or machine learning will do the same right so i think of course there will be a tools in future which can automate lot of design solutions but as there will be a more design solutions i believe with upcoming technology there will be a more complicated problem statements as well which only human can solve that's what i believe okay uh, so uh, there are two questions on the similar tone how to start with the basics of design or how to get jobs without ux experience <laughs> i think that's uh, i mean this is the question <laughs> why i keep uh, i mean listening from lot of mentees so yeah so i think uh, uh, a basic uh, approach to get into the design world is to start reading about it right so i mean lot of people or lot of candidates when i interact with them they try to understand okay design is something is trending today so why should i go into the design and uh, uh, take a risk like how should I, uh, and maybe some people found it very cool domain uh, that's what i also think about coming into the design it's attracting lot of candidates but i think the right way to get into the design is to build your approach as a designer and uh, start thinking about uh, products and start thinking about human needs and how exactly uh, design is uh, bringing this all two requirements together and solving the uh, problem statements right uh, i think start reading about books and uh, that would be the first approach i would say second uh, once you started understanding about design or at least a basic fundamentals of design i think start writing about design as well which is also equally important Uh, think about how you can criticize a product or write down your own articles about design critics right what you think about what is what is a good experience what is a bad experience write it down maybe you can start it from the basics and with respect to time you will understand how to find a problem in the existing ecosystem and once you understand that i think on the top of that you can build your own initiated project right and again i i want to tell you lot of uh, 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 mentees also doing i mean i have seen lot of candidates are doing a mistake that they they are going to the design courses which is a good thing to learn about it but they are coming with uh, entirely new design applications maybe they on their own right which is fine to understand the design process but it won't validate you as a designer right so i have seen their portfolio and they are creating a templatized process of design and uh, and and designing something new out of the box application rather i would say if you really want to get into the design career uh, why not to redesign the existing application right think about existing application maybe linkedin twitter or anything could be and see how exactly this applications are working today and what could be better into that and try not to solve the big problem i would say try to focus on the small problem statement and come up with the best creative solution whether it could be redesigning a chat box of linkedin that will definitely have an independent big case study for your designer so think about that how to solve micro problems rather than coming with a big application i would yeah and that that also really help you to think more practical and uh, it will also help you to build a strong, take a survey with lot of existing users uh, for that Okay, we have two similar questions. When it comes to use AR and VR in design, mm -hmm. where to start? Please suggest some process guide. And who will rule the future? AR, VR, or AI? <laughs> I think that that uh, that is difficult to answer. What uh, what <laughs> would be the dominant technology? But 
uh, I think uh, I, I still believe that the way machine learning and artificial intelligence influencing our lifestyle, or maybe it also influencing our decision making power. Uh, I think that would be uh, where I see the inclination towards. And uh, how to start with it? Uh, of course, when when it's come to understanding machine learning AI, start uh, looking about uh, looking for the tools like uh, Unity 3D, which is a great tool where right. you can actually start with basic understanding how the environment or AR VR work. Uh, even I have uh, done a lot of work in Unity 3D to write from designing an environment and how to code into that and how to put your uh, Python related script into that and how to make it more interactive. And uh, so uh, if you're interested into future design, first thing I would recommend is to, to start using online tools, which are uh, which which help you to experiment with the machine learning and AI, right? Um, I think this Discord is one of the tool where you can uh, mm -hmm. think about it. And uh, second thing I would say, uh, and again, I'm coming back to this is start reading about programming languages as well. I'm not saying you have to be pro into the coding language, but at least see how the Python works, how the nature of Python is there. And if we know this kind of uh, coding uh, platforms, or if we understand their nature, it will help us to come up with the best solution as well. Right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. They were silent in the start, and now it's all flooded with questions. I think they are diverse. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay, let's take one from the chat box. It's around, uh, sorry, not really related, but what's your thought on people charging high without no experience and portfolio? I've seen people doing this and wonder if it is legit. <laughs> Okay, I think that is that is uh, again a difficult <laughs> question. I would say, uh, but I'm glad that you. Uh, I mean, people are asking this kind of question, and uh, so uh, this is still a subjective uh, answer. I would say uh, because when it's come to uh, charging high without having experience, uh, it, it it is somehow related to your ethical experience as well, right? What kind of solutions? Uh, you are providing, but again, uh, rather than comparing your expertise uh, with your experience, I would more compare it with your ROI, right? So even if you have experience of one year, or even if you have experience of 10 years, it doesn't matter to me as a client. I would be more focusing on what ROI you will bring to my uh, organization, right? So that you need to think about how as a designer, you can bring return of investment for the business as a designer. So you not only need to think about users, but also need to consider the stakeholder requirement and how your design will help organizations to that. So I think it is still uh, not related to your experience, but if you have really better solution, then you should definitely ask for higher money. Okay. How do we keep up with the latest design trends or can you tell us some of the best platforms where we can stay up to date on these trends? I, I say Twitter is really up to date, uh, which I personally follow a lot. Uh, it, 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 I mean, there are a lot of good uh, uh, handles on Twitter, which keep you updating about new technologies. Uh, apart from that, I think Discord server is also a good one where you can right. open your account immediately and start exploring how the Discord works, how people across the world with the coding background and putting and trying to uh, uh, come up with the best creative solutions in terms of coding, machine learning, and stuff like that. I think uh, even if you sincerely follow this too, I think it's more than enough uh, for you, I guess. And I think there are so many Slack and Discord communities these days where, mm -hmm. you know, people from different backgrounds, they just gather together and, you know, on a specific topic, there are just specific Slack communities and people are literally running boot camps from there. That's right. And that also makes me fascinating, like how people are collaborating into different right. together. I mean, uh, there are people I've seen who uh, come together on Discord and come up with a diff completely different background and doing project together and coming with the best solution. So I think that's really a good way to collaborate with people as well. Yeah. 
cool okay it is often seen that there is a gap between user requirements and ux design how to bridge the gap okay so uh, i think the best way to talk with users uh, and try to genuinely understand the process uh, uh, genuinity is really important in the design process you uh, not need to only always think about the what methods you use but how exactly you are connecting with the users and uh, you genuinely need to ask them questions or make them comfortable with you uh, try not to make them bias about what they are saying and uh, uh, that will definitely come up with a more latent needs and as i also think you also start building your own design critic thinking process uh, which also help you how to ask questions and where to ask questions because what kind of questions you asking to the users plays a really important role how exactly your project will go in future so uh, whatever you last they will answer to that question so uh, you also need to understand how to read between the lines and how to understand their latent needs and uh, yeah stuff like that so i think that will help uh, to solve this pro uh, problem what you asked in the question right cool i think we'll take last two questions over here um okay this is an interesting one do you think technology getting less expensive is the enhancement reason for the enhancement of technology uh, sorry can you come again <clears throat> do you think technology getting less expensive is the reason for the enhancement of technology uh i think it's a common trend that whatever is uh, so hmm. when it's come to technology if, uh, i mean if you see the behavior of technology in market uh, when the new technology comes into the uh, in, into our life it start creating a trend first right and everybody is starting to talking about it and then there is a hype about it and then uh, suddenly it got falls uh, in the graph and then nobody is talking about it that is how the trend of technology is there but then when the technology uh, brings maturity with respect to time into the market ultimately it also connected with the cost right so uh, you might see the platform like ar vr are expensive today but in 5 years it would be uh, open or maybe available for everyone it could be open source that you can get into that and i think it already started uh, when i yeah, see the platforms like meta and what not it already started that uh, you can go into that create your own environment and what not but again i i, I want to uh, uh i mean uh, also encourage lot of designers if you really interested into ar vr uh, start exploring different games available online which are uh, associate with the nif technologies and uh, augmented realities and what not so these are there are a lot of games available online maybe i can also share that well, uh, as well uh, where which will help you to think as a future designer like what would be the new upcoming problem statements would be okay i would like to know how psychology helped us help us in designing for ar or vr role of psychology in ar vr design yeah i think psychology plays a huge role in design domain itself uh, it is not specific to the ar vr but it it is going to uh, play a huge role in terms of uh, how you perceive things how you behave in ar vr so i think the reason why i told you about ethical design is uh, also could be the reason why uh, ar vr is going to affect our psychological uh, factor as well so uh, because what we think what we perceive is completely based on our uh, environment and ecosystem but if we started using frequently uh, ar vr devices how exactly it's going to affect our psychology it could be another challenges and that we need to think as a designer like how we can bring more uh, best ethical approach out of it cool i'll take the last one from the chat section what is the advantage and disadvantage of using uh, ai in the design now and in the future i think i would i would go with uh, disadvantage first uh, because it it does have a lot of disadvantages because we human behave organically into the ecosystem we don't think uh, structured in a structured way i would say uh, we we take decision based on our influence we take decision on our memories and our experience or maybe relation uh, with the other people 
but AI thinks differently. Uh, so AI, AI thinks more about uh, what data AI has, what kind of neural mechanism they have, how exactly AI process the data, which is even though mechanism uh, is same uh, uh, as compared to human, but the processing of data is still uh, very complicated in terms of human uh, thinking process. So I think uh, when it's come to disadvantages, uh, when we started implementing AI machine learning in our day-to-day -day life, it will create a lot of complicated decisions <clears throat> as well as uh, it can also create a lot of complicated dynamics within the humans as well. So I think that would be the uh, higher level disadvantage, I would say. Of course, there will be more detailed one. Uh, advantages, of course, uh, automation and taking decisions or maybe redundant decisions where people are not in. Uh, so there are a lot of jobs in the world which are uh, uh, required you redundant skills or maybe redundant job cycles where you have to do the same uh, thing again and again. Yeah, and there's the play of AI will, uh, where they will automate things more accurately, uh, like mimicking the human behavior, not only just automating, yeah. but how exactly they will, they can mimic human into the particular situation. I think that will be a good advantage. So, uh, will be in industries uh, in upcoming future. Yeah. Cool. I think this was a very amazing session, Pratikesh, and thanks a lot for doing this with us. And I think the the people over there they they really loved it. And the speciality is that they're all from different backgrounds and you know someone is new to design someone is a professional but i think everyone could relate to the workshop today because it yeah. is some it's the future and everyone is curious to know the future yeah. and thank right. you so much uh, thank you so much you and guys I, have, yeah I and mean, that was the main I just, uh, reason. sorry Continue. yeah go ahead go ahead no i was just saying i've shared your profiling if anyone has any issue you can connect with uh, Pratikesh on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. Cool. Yeah, sorry, continue. Yeah, I think that was the main reason uh, when I was going through a different workshop, I was trying to thinking why not to come up with something different for the workshop and uh, dis discuss on different topics like AI and upcoming future. And I hope like uh, this helped a lot of designers and uh, if you have any kind of questions, uh, maybe you will come up with a lot of questions in upcoming days. Right. You think, right. Thinking of asking me, uh, I mean, my contact details are given here. You can mail me, you can connect me on LinkedIn or anywhere. Uh, you can ask me questions, maybe even if you are interested to working with me on something kind of machine learning AI kind of product, I would happy to work with you as well. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for the case. Thank and you so much. I think yeah. we'll do it again sometime with another interesting topic. I think yeah, that was sure. really grateful. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Have a rest, good day, good day and weekend. And yeah. keep learning from Proverbs. Thank you so much, Satyakesh. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.